Hey guys, thanks for tuning into my channel. My name is Ashley Coons, and um, I'm so happy you're here today. We're gonna do a different video from what I typically upload. I know I have like my makeup uploads, and then I have my art uploads, but today we are gonna talk about a surgery that I had, and I'm hoping that this video will be helpful to any of you who are maybe suffering with some of the things that I'm suffering with, and um, are maybe considering surgery as an option. I know when I first heard that I could have surgery to fix my issues that I'm having, I was very hesitant and I did a lot of research on YouTube and stuff and I really couldn't find a lot of videos about people's personal experience with how the surgery went, how they felt, how long it took to recover. And so I really wanted to try to make this video so that you, you guys, if you're considering it, could have something to reference. So the surgery that I had was a turbinant reduction and um, that's just, I had a polyp in my nose that was growing and it was blocking my airflow, but I also had a deviated septum. So in my surgery, they removed the polyp and they fixed the deviation. And so I really wanted to just make this video so that you guys could have something to reference if you're ever having some of the issues that I have. So I wanna apologize in advance. Um, the orientation of the video sometimes changes from portrait to um, landscape, and that's my fault. I filmed some of it when I was doped up on drugs <laughs> and recovering from surgery. Um, also, I wanna add a little disclaimer because some of the pictures are gonna be a little bit gross and I do talk about like blood and stuff like that and some kind of icky stuff because as with any surgery, you typically have some kind of drainage. So I do mention that in this video. So if you're not into that, don't watch the rest of this video. But if you're curious about turbinate reduction surgery and um, deviated septum surgery, stay tuned. All right, we're gonna flip to the first video in here. Um, the first video is right after my surgery and I kind of just talk about how I'm feeling and stuff like that and it goes all the way through to two months post-op so which I'm also filming this intro right now to two months post-op so I hope that you'll be able to hear a change in my voice from how I'm speaking now to how I speak in these first couple of clips and if you've watched my previous videos I'm sure you're going to pick up on it right away so without further ado um oops dropping stuff. Uh, here's the video. Hey guys, so some of you may already know this, but I got surgery done yesterday on my nose. I had my deviated septum fixed, and then I had a big polyp that I've been growing in my nose or in my sinuses that was giving me a lot of trouble, so I couldn't really breathe well out of my nose. Um, but I just wanted to post a little update, so I'm about like exactly 24 hours post-op now and um, as you can see I've got a little bit of swelling in my face my nose is pretty swollen um, I have some stints that they put in my nostrils and those will come out on Tuesday during my post-op appointment um, I had a little bit of like broken blood vessels here in the corner of my eye but that's not too bad and as far as bruising goes like I expected bruises underneath and there really wasn't any um, but I feel pretty good today I had energy to do my makeup and my hair I showered um, and then I also had time to clean the bathroom so that's been really helpful um, the pain has been super manageable I've been doing um, hydrocodone every six hours and then um, like all subs for Tylenol like every three hours in between taking the hydrocodone or ibuprofen so that's working really well um, I am super dry like my throat's been really dry so I've been drinking a ton of water and then I also set up a humidifier in my bedroom so when I'm sleeping I have moist air and that's been really helpful because my mouth has been so dry but um, as you can hear I'm super stuffy my ears keep popping um, but as far as like pain goes it's it's been very minimal um, last night I had a little bit of a scare I had just like a chest pain that started and I let it go for like two hours but then I was getting really short of breath too and I knew it could be from my surgery, from like coughing and stuff like that when I woke up from the anesthesia. But I also just wanted to make sure that it wasn't like a blood clot or something like that. So I did go to the ER at like, I think it was like 10 o'clock last night, just to make sure nothing was wrong. And they ran tests twice, which I thought was really thorough and I appreciated that. But I was there for like five hours. So I got home shortly after three in the morning. And then I had been napping on and off while I was in the ER. So I think it took like four 
20 minute or half hour naps or something while I was up there. So I had a lot of energy when I got home. And I did the dishes before going to bed and did some picking up. So, I mean, overall, like, I'm super shocked with how good I feel. And I hope it continues. And my nose just made a really funny noise. I don't know if you picked that up on the camera, but... Um, yeah, so it seems so far like it's been a pretty good recovery. And my eyes are kind of like pink today. I don't know why that is, but like I look almost drunk, but I'm not. Maybe that's just from the hydrocodone. Could be. Anyways, but I'm feeling pretty good. Um, the bleeding has slowed down a lot. Yesterday I had to wear like a gauze wrap underneath my nose for like the whole entire day. And that was kind of annoying because it was just filling with blood all day long. And I can post pictures. Um, I'll probably post this on my YouTube later on. So I can post some pictures there of like what my polyp looked like. And then like what it looked like right after I was out of recovery. Um, but yeah, so that's where I'm at with things. I'm feeling pretty good. And I'll keep you guys posted as the days, goes on, as the days go on. <laughs> Anyways, I uh, hope you have a great day. Thanks. All right, so this first picture I'm sharing is right after surgery, like the same day. You can see I've got some bruising under my eye, a lot of swelling in my nose. And then this next one, you can see more of like the swelling that I had in my face. I don't talk about it a lot throughout the video, but I kind of forgot that that even happened. Um, the next video or the next picture is um, my nose was bleeding profusely, and this was the second day after surgery. So I kind of wrapped it up. That didn't last very long, but it looked kind of funny, so I thought, Thought I'd include it. And then this was towards the end of the second day. Um, still some swelling. Um, that little thing hanging down is what was like catching the blood from my nose. This one here is um, like the day after that. So that would be Sunday. So two or three days post-surgery. I'm still swollen. Still looking not great. This picture right here, um, it says splint on there. But um, like I've heard it called a stint and I've heard it called a stent. But those things were actually up my nose. And then in this next image right here, you can actually see them in my nose. So this just kind of helped, I think, keep the shape of my nose and protect things from getting damaged if, like, I bump my nose or something. And then this one here was third day post-op. So you can see I'm looking a lot better. Wasn't feeling the greatest, so I wasn't exactly smiling. Um, my mouth wasn't working quite the way I wanted it to. Um, and here's just a little funny video. This is the day of my surgery. I had it in the morning and this is at night. I was trying to eat soup and I actually had to look through a mirror <laughs> and put my soup on the spoon and tip my head back in order to eat. So I just thought that was funny. <laughs> hey guys, so I wanted to do a quick update here. Right now it's Wednesday and I had my surgery on Friday. So I guess that means I'm like five days post-op. Um, I'm still really stuffy. I feel like my nose is crooked. I don't know if you can see that, but Anyway, um, I'm feeling pretty good. I stopped taking painkillers on like, or like hydrocodone and I stopped that on Saturday and I've just been doing ibuprofen and Tylenol to kind of manage, but there really hasn't been a lot of pain with this, which was surprising for me. I thought it would be throbbing and burning, but for the most part, it's just like the congestion that's so annoying. Um, I'm super stuffed up. I do still have stents or stints in my nose tomorrow at my post-op appointment I'll be getting those out and then I think I'll feel like a million times better um but yeah I made it until like almost five o'clock today without taking any medication for pain and now I've just got a little bit of a tension headache and I think it's just because of the pressure that's in the center of my face so I'm hoping tomorrow after I get the stents out that my nose is going to look a lot smaller because right now it is for sure bigger than how it was prior to the surgery, but, um, and I'm also hoping I won't be so stuffed up because it's annoying. I'm still sleeping elevated. I'm doing like a saline rinse to my nose a few times a day, doing antibacterial ointment. I'm still taking antibiotics. So I'm still doing a lot of things to try to care for it and make sure that it's healing up okay. So I'm looking forward to my doctor appointment tomorrow though, just to make sure that everything's looking good. So, um, I guess that's it for my update. I um, hope you find this helpful and I'll talk to you later. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is uh, the bleeding has slowed down a lot up until, let's see, um, so I had the surgery on Friday. Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I bled a ton. Monday, I bled um, pretty good. You know, I was wiping it off every two minutes probably, but it wasn't like 
pouring out or anything anymore. And then um, yesterday it really started to dry up a little bit and a lot less blood. And now today it seems like maybe like once every hour and a half I'm having to just kind of use a Q-tip and like clean up the area a little bit. Um, but not nearly as much dripping as it was before. And I know that sounds super gross, but I'm kind of making this in case there's anybody who has gotten this surgery or is going to get this surgery and they just kind of want to know what to expect. So that was my experience with it. It won't necessarily be your experience with it, but, um, yeah, um, for the first few days I had to wear like a bandage underneath my nose just to catch everything because it was pretty gruesome and pretty gross. So, um, Tomorrow I'm hoping when I go to my post-op appointment that I can film while he removes the stents from my nose so you can see like what that looks like and what the pain is like. If he doesn't want me to film, I'll just film a follow-up and just kind of tell you guys about the experience. So I hope you find this helpful. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. So I should just go back and recap a little bit. Um, the surgery I had was a turbinant reduction and basically I had a polyp in my nose that was 2.5 centimeters big and so that was blocking my airflow but then also I had a deviated septum on top of that and so that was also blocking my airflow so that's why I couldn't breathe for so long through my nose um, and I like I said you know I've had so many wonderful benefits of having this surgery like going into surgery is always a really scary scary thing but it's been life-changing for me like shout out to dr bruns at essentia and all of his wonderful staff because i had the surgery um i think it was is it april 30th may june july we're into july now so yeah i think it was april 30th it was at the end of the month um but it's been like two full months i know since surgery um but anyway so i went in had the surgery i woke up from anesthesia and i was completely clear-headed like I've had multiple surgeries over the years I've had some ovarian cysts removed wisdom teeth um, tonsils and adenoids when I was a little kid and just uh, appendix gallbladder you name it any excess organs that you could possibly have I've had them removed so I've had a lot of surgeries and um, I had a lot of anxiety going into this one because the last two surgeries I had I had a hard time waking up from the anesthesia to the point where like machines started beeping and nurses kind of rushed in and um, it was really scary and I could hear all that happening but I just couldn't make myself take a breath so that's really frightening so my anxiety was sky high prior to my surgery and I sat down with the anesthesiologist and I told her my concerns and she went back actually and looked in my chart from 2012 when I had my last surgery to see what they gave me for anesthesia and how much so that she can kind of tailor it to me so that I wouldn't wake up being so groggy and you know or not wake up at all and um, she did a phenomenal job because I've never woken up that clear-headed after surgery it was like they said okay Ashley it's time to wake up and I was awake and didn't say anything crazy <laughs> which is really nice and I was just very clear-headed and I didn't feel sick and that's another huge thing is Typically after surgery, I end up vomiting, which is the last thing you want to do when you've just been cut open in any part of your body. So I also didn't get sick after after the anesthesia, so that was fantastic. But um, I went home, and I mean, there was a lot of blood that came out. That's just natural. You know, they removed that polyp, and I believe they cauterized it on the inside, but I had stints put up my nose. And if I could find a picture of them, like not the ones that were actually in my nose, but um, just an example, I'll pop it up here for you. But so I had the stints in my nose um, and like I had to wear a little thing underneath my face or my nose to catch any blood or whatever coming out for a couple of days that really helped. Um, but the next day after surgery, I woke up and was just shocked that I didn't have any throbbing in my face like I expected I would. Um, I didn't have too much swelling, too much bruising. I had a little like um, I think it's going to call it a petechia hemorrhage in my eye, um, but just that little spot and I had a little bit of yellowing like underneath my eyes, but nothing like what I expected. I mean, I thought my whole face was going to be blown up, <laughs> but it was actually really good and I expected significant amount of pain. And so I took the painkillers only until one o'clock the day after surgery and then that was the last time I took them and then um, like the prescription painkillers and then after that I just switched to ibuprofen and Tylenol and um, they don't recommend ibuprofen after surgery, but I risked it 
because I like ibuprofen better than Tylenol personally. So I was taking just like two ibuprofen every six to eight hours and that totally made it so I had absolutely zero pain. Um, I had to sleep sitting up which was challenging for me because I'm used to sleeping on my stomach like face flat on my bed. <laughs> but for I think almost a week I slept elevated just so that you know stuff could drain properly and um, plus it just made it easier to breathe because then I literally could only breathe through my mouth which I was kind of used to but it's different when something's in your nose. Um, the only downfall of the surgery was for that week from when I had the surgery to when I went to my post-op appointment I had a ton of congestion in my face because they put the stints up there which they do have holes to allow drainage but there was so much that was just stuck in my face and um, like I could just feel it, you know, it felt like I had a baseball inside of my skin. It was so frustrating, but it didn't hurt. Never throbbed, nothing ever burned. Um, I had some numbness on my like upper palate, like right behind my front teeth here. Um, and that is still a little bit sensitive two months later, but I'd say probably three weeks ago. So. Uh, give or take like seven weeks post-op or um, five weeks post-op it was feeling almost normal again but I was kind of concerned that I wouldn't get that feeling back in there um, and when I went to the post-op appointment I told the doctor how I'm feeling and how surprised I was that I was feeling that good and um, he told me that typically there is some pain that people experience with this surgery and I just got really lucky which is shocking because I've never been the lucky one when it comes to surgeries like all my other surgeries I've had significant amounts of pain like you know needing help with everything and with this one it was so easy um, while I was healing in that week from the surgery to the post-op appointment I did saline rinses multiple times a day just to kind of clean stuff out as best I could and um, I couldn't blow my nose or anything so to clean up the area I kind of just had to use q-tips and then I used um, I think it's bacitracin ointment it's like an antibiotic ointment that I just kind of put on the q-tip and kind of just rubbed up wherever I could reach and that was good and then when I went to the post-op appointment the doctor removed the stints from my nose and I'm glad I didn't film it because I was going to film that appointment but he used this okay this might be TMI, but he used this little like suction thing, kind of like what you get at a dentist, but it had a really fat tube, like probably like the size of a quarter. It was a very large, you know, round tube and it was hooked to a suction. And so he stuck that up my nose and the amount of stuff that he sucked out of my face oh, would have ruined your life <laughs> to see. It was so bad, so gross. I mean, he had a tube that was probably like eight feet long and it was just solid with stuff. It was pretty gross. So I'm glad I didn't film that because nobody really wants to see that. But anyway, so after he cleaned all that out, you know, I had a, quite a bit of bleeding right after that just because we kind of, you know, irritated some stuff up there. But the bleeding stopped probably two or three hours later. And then here or there, I would just have a little bit of spotting or like a little bloody nose or something and I'd just wipe it up. And at that point, then I was allowed to like start blowing my nose softly so um, I could do that I was still really scared I was afraid I was gonna hurt something so I didn't try that as much as I probably could have but again you know I wasn't in pain all that congestion that had been up there had been sucked out so I was feeling a lot better in that regard and um, yeah I mean it just it's really shocking to me that I could have a surgery like that that I didn't even know I needed like the only way that I ended up at the ear, nose, and throat doctor, see, I've been seeing ENT doctors for five or six years, ever since I started having really bad allergies, and I'm allergic to pretty much everything, but um, I was seeing ENT doctors, and none of them looked up my nose. Um, they all just wanted me to do, like, these allergy shots all the time, and I didn't want to do that because with my allergies, when they're acting up, I get asthma, and if you're somebody who has asthma with your allergies, then you have to go to the clinic like once or twice a week to get your allergy shots. And at that time in my life, that just wasn't an option. You know, I couldn't just go two times a week, you know, and take an hour and a half or two hours to go get these shots. So 
I opted to not do that over all of these years and so I've kind of just been suffering and trying out different allergy meds and whatnot and what actually brought me to the ENT doctor this time was I was having so much trouble sleeping at night because I was waking up with a really dry mouth and sometimes I'd gasp for air and so I thought maybe I was having some sleep apnea and so I went to the sleep medicine doctor and told her everything that was going on and she said, well, let's book you for the sleep study, which is like you go overnight and they hook you up to all these tubes and stuff and then they monitor your breathing and your sleep. And she said, well, let's set you up for that. So she did. And she said, but I also want you to go see the ENT doctor because I think some of your problems maybe are related to your sinuses because she could hear how stuffed up I was. And so went to the ENT doctor and um, this was the first time that, you know, this was a different one than I'd seen ever before. And this was the first time that like I walked in and he was like, so you're having all these problems. And I said, yes. And he said, well, why don't we take a look up your nose? And I'm like, you can do that. Oh, awesome. So I said, yeah, let's do it. And he said, all right, well, do you want to do it right now? And I said, let's get it over with. So then he stuck the camera up and he had a really hard time getting up one of the nostrils because my deviation was so severe. But he did make it up there, um, and then the other side, he put it up there and he saw the polyp right away, so he couldn't get all the way around it, so at that point he didn't even know how big it was or, you know, what it was attached to or anything like that. So, um, you know, he, he told me right away, he said, you're a great candidate for this surgery, I think that you should do it, I think it's going to improve your quality of life. And at that point, I really just thought, okay, well, this is going to make me breathe through my nose better. Like, I didn't realize that it was going to make me sleep better at night, that my allergies would be improved. Like, I have severe allergies, and I do take a Zyrtec every single day, but um, I, in the past six years, haven't had an allergy season like I've had over the last couple of months where I'm not absolutely miserable. And I honestly think that you know, allergies can cause polyps to grow in your nose from what I've researched. And I think that, you know, just having the polyp up there and the deviation and then having allergies on top of that, like it was just too much irritation. And so it just sent me into a downward spiral every single time the allergies kicked in. Um, I had to wear like a mask over my face every time I'd vacuum or dust my house because I would end up being asthmatic for three or five days afterwards because it triggered my allergies that bad and then made my asthma kick in but like I vacuumed yesterday and have zero problems today and I don't anticipate any problems tomorrow so I think that you know having this surgery has made me sleep better at night um you know I can obviously breathe through my nose which is great it's improved my voice including my singing voice which I've never been a great singer but being able to actually have proper airflow when you're singing and, you know, having the sound come out of your mouth and not being blocked by your nose. Hard to explain, but um, yeah, so that's been improved. My, um, I feel like I have just a lot more energy and stuff too because I can breathe so much better. You know, um, I can work out easier, which is really nice. And yeah, I, just overall, it has been like, a total like change in how I feel from day to day so I guess um, that's really all I have to say about it but if you are somebody who is constantly stuffed up and you always like feel like you can't blow your nose properly you can't clear your airways like go see an ENT doctor and just see because there might be something growing up there that you don't even know and had I not been referred to this doctor because of my sleep problems I might be living, you know, who knows how many more years, not knowing what was going on up there. So I guess my recommendation for you guys is if you think you're having a problem with your nose or if you talk and you sound really nasally and people, people notice, um, just make an appointment and go check it out and see if there's something going on that could be fixed with surgery because it could change your life. And I know for me, it has certainly been a life changer. Like, I don't regret doing it at all, and I wish I would have done it many years sooner because I probably would have felt better for a lot longer. But um, the only bad thing is, is um, like the polyps or the terminant, terminant reduction, those can like grow back, so you might need another surgery down the road. But um, for now, I'm just gonna enjoy it and be happy that I can breathe through my nose, and yeah. 
So I hope this video helped you guys. I know it's different from what I typically do for my YouTube uploads, but I thought it was really important because I know when I was going in for the surgery, I really couldn't find a ton of information on what I was getting myself into. So if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nurse, but I can only speak from my own personal experience and hopefully this helps you guys out a little bit. So um, thanks for tuning in and have a great day.